Great. Well, welcome everyone today to our RoboFlow webinar. I'm uh, joined by myself, Nick Herrig. I'm a field engineer with RoboFlow. I've been working here for about a year and joined by Hunter. Hey guys, I'm Hunter. I'm on our um, user success team here at RoboFlow. Been here about a year as well. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about a kind of a fun side project that we built called uh, SplitTheG.dev. Um, it's a little game where you can challenge your friends on who can have the best split G, which we'll go into in a little bit here. Cool. So in terms of an agenda, we're going to kick things off by explaining what is splitting the G, get everybody up to speed. And then from there, we're going to go into an app demo and show you guys what did we actually build. Then we're going to jump into how scoring works and how we thought about the logic behind uh, what number score you get. Then we're going to show you guys inference JS, which is a cool tool um, that we're using um, to deploy our models. Then from there, we're going to go into a workflow demo and show you guys how we utilize RoboFlow workflows to, to make some of the magic behind the app. Then we're going to jump into um, the leaderboard and show you guys a little bit about Supabase and how um, we incorporated that into the, the leaderboard. And then we're going to talk about what's next. What is next for Split the G app? So background, what is Splitting the G? Splitting the G is a game that some people who enjoy Guinness like to do when they're out having a pint with their friends at a bar. How it works essentially is you take a freshly poured pint of Guinness with a foam near the top. And the objective is to take one continuous sip and leave the beer fill level split right at the Guinness level there. So as you can see on the right side, we've got two Guinness glasses with um, the beer, like intersecting the G on the Guinness logo. So it's supposed to be done in one sip, friendly, you know, no stress challenge. But we decided to um, overcomplicate it with a computer vision app. Yeah, so today we have a little bit of fun. I do have a Guinness in front of me um, right here. It's already split. So no, uh, no live testing of the skill set here today. But um, I'm going to just really quickly show off the app here. I do have uh, somewhat of a, a local version of the app running today as more of a learning exercise because there are some components mentioned in the agenda that we want to cover here to help kind of tour the app and learn. So this is a React, uh, React router app, uses Supabase for the storage. Um, and what I've just done here is I've run NPM run. Um, this app will share, we have the GitHub all available um, to review the code after the fact as well. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up this local instance of our split the G score here. So as you can see, this home page, really the only call to action here is to start the analysis or starting the split. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start the split. I've got another webcam that's pointed in this direction here. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to throw my Guinness glass in front of here. And you can see here that as I position the Guinness glass, you'll see here it says make sure to, to show the G pattern is visible. Um, you can see here that it also says when I remove the pint, it says show your pint glass. And kind of the cool thing here that we've done is we've um, automated the image capture. So as I spin this beer around to actually see the G here, um, it should essentially zoom in here and it'll say keep the glass centered, hold still, and then it'll process the scoring. So that's using inference.js. We'll talk about that in a second here. But what that does is it automatically captures the image when we see that split. Also, pretty pretty solid split here. Out of our 35 local splits, we've got rank one, so not bad. Um, it is a pretty solid split G. Um, what we're also going to talk about here is how we get these images, how we annotate the images, and then how we actually go about um, scoring that here. The other cool thing here is we have incorporated sharing, so these scores are stateful. And we can take a look at our leaderboard to see past splits as well. Now I'm going to pass it back here to talk a little bit about how we um, how we actually do the scoring. Awesome. Um, so you might be wondering how did we come up with the scores there? And you might be wondering that was pretty dang close. That that should be a five in my book. Well, this was how we thought about it. We thought about it as anything where the beer fill level line was between the top of the G and the bottom of the G, we were gonna assign that between a 3.75 and a five. 
we could have made it um, again, it's arbitrary. So we could have made it 3.5 to five, but we felt like anything where, you know, the G is split, we're going to give that a 3.75. That's a good job. Then when this fill level is outside of the top and the bottom of that G, we are going to um, make that between zero and 3.75 with increasing distance from either the bottom or the top of the glass. So there was a couple of scenarios that we needed to consider, which was those two cases. The first case is where if the Guinness is split, what we're going to do is we're going to crop into the G and get a little bit more specific with it. We're going to determine, the, we're going to look at the G and we're going to determine the distance between um, the beer's fill level and the midpoint of the G. And that's how we assign the score there. And we'll, we'll get into the, the logic behind it as well in a little bit. But, and then in the other example, um, what we're doing is we're taking, we're identifying the location of the G, we're finding the beer's fill level, and then we're determining the distance between the fill level um, and the center of the G. So we've got three examples here. And again, these were just as we were sort of workshopping this and coming up with the scoring. Um, on the left example there, we've got, um, the fill level pretty far from the G and we said, hey, we'll call that a two. And then now we've moved a little bit closer in the second example. So we're closer, but we're still not intersecting. The beer's fill level is still not intersecting with the G. We'll call that a three. And then again, in the third example on the right, we're a little bit low and it's a little bit further from the um, G than the second example. So we'd call that a 2.5. So a little bit, um, arbitrary in terms of the breakdown of 3.75 to 5, but that was how we thought about it. Yeah, great. Now let's talk a little bit about um, inference JS. So inference JS is kind of the magic that's happening to capture the image um, prior to scoring. And so inference JS is also, it's a open source um, JavaScript package that RoboFlow manages. And it allows folks to run models client side or in the browser. So for example, in that example you saw on my laptop, that model's running on my laptop locally. Um, or if I was to bring up split the g.dev on my phone, um, this initial model is actually running directly in the browser. So pretty cool to be able to do that real time on device on the edge. Um, the other thing that kind of wanted to call out here is that we're using this image capture not only for you know a good user experience so that a, a person doesn't have to actually physically take the picture, but a side effect of that is actually image quality. So what we're doing here is we want to make sure that we can see a glass and that the glass has that iconic Guinness G prior to doing further processing for our scoring logic. So this really helps us kind of hone in on, hey, are we seeing kind of the environment, the image that we want to see? before we run further processing um, of our pipeline there. Now, there is some pretty solid documentation out on our RoboFlow docs that we've linked. Um, we'll put this in some of the comments as well. And then we also have this really cool Next.js template. This app we showed was built with React, um, React Router. But we also have this uh, Next.js template, if you're a fan of Next, that also does the exact same, kind of has the same scaffolding that you can look at. I do want to kind of go back and demo some of this in real time, though, as well. So if I go back to the split here, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crack open the console here because there's some cool stuff we can look at in real time to take a look at what's actually happening happening with inference.js. So when I click on that to capture the pint, you can see here these are the results from inference running in real time. And you can see here the detection status has glass false, has G false, and consecutive detections. When I throw my Guinness back on my screen here, what you'll see here is now we're seeing the glass. So it says, has glass true? And we can take a peek at these inference results as well. So you can see it's just the predictions. We've got our class, which is a glass, and our confidence, which we're pretty confident with that it is a glass. Now, if I go ahead and turn that, that Guinness back around here, you can see that we're starting to get our consecutive detections here. And once we reach the six consecutive detections, or essentially about three seconds, um, you can see here that we'll go ahead and automatically capture that. And all of that's being handled by inference.js. Now, once we see that sixth uh, consecutive frame with both a G and the glass in there, that's when we hit the RoboFlow API, which is all done through a workflow. Awesome. So now once we've got that high quality image and we've seen six consecutive 
frames with all of the detections that we want to see. Now we're going to capture that image and send that to the RoboFlow, to RoboFlow workflows via an API call. So um, this is a pretty cool tool. Not sure if everybody here has had a chance to um, test it out, but Nick, if you click on that deploy button, it allows us to deploy um, all of the logic in this workflow just with this one um, API call. So you've got a couple different options how you can deploy it, um, hosted, um, local as well. So Nick, if you back out, we can sort of show what's going on here. So this is a low code tool that's gonna to take in that high quality image um, that inference.js enabled us to capture. And it's going to do a couple of different things. The first step is passing it through our object detection model, which is looking for the pint glass, the G and the beer fill level. Once we've got um, all three of those things, we're gonna do a couple of different things. The first is we're gonna use active learning to re-upload our um, original image back into the platform so that we can continuously um, relabel data and add it back to our data sets to improve our model's quality. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to visualize our detections. So we're going to draw the bounding boxes and label um, the image, and we're going to return that in our response. Third thing we're going to do is we're going to crop down to the G. So we're going to filter out all of the um, other detections, so the glass and the beer fill level. And we're just going to now look um, on this branch at the G. We're going to crop down to the G and we're going to upload that image to another RoboFlow project. It's just the split down Gs where we run our second stage model. Our second stage model is what's detecting the um, fill level on the G to get that second image that you would have seen when Nick um, went through the demo the cropped down detection with the fill level of the drink. Then we're gonna visualize that and we can go ahead and test that actually right here in the browser. So we've got two images in here. And when we test these, we're gonna get a couple of different things in our response. So Nick, if you wanna to go to visualize, first up, we're gonna get our um, cropped down image. So we've got that G there, you can see the fill level, um, and that is one of the two images um, that you see on the split the G at. The second one is the original image with the glass, the G, the beer, and that's the other image that's displayed on the app. If you want to back out to the, the JSON for us, Nick, we've got a couple of other things happening here. So we get our results in this JSON format of the two different stages of the model that we're then going to use for some of the post-processing and scoring logic that Nick's going to speak on in a little bit. But so here you can see our results from our split. So that's the cropped down second stage model. And then if we move down a little bit, we'll also get the um, information on, on our detections from the first stage. So we've got the X and Y coordinates, confidence, things like that um, for the glass, the beer, the G. And we're gonna take those um, from our API call response and um, you know come up with a score from that. All right, so let's talk a little bit deeper on the scoring algorithm. Um, all of this code, like I mentioned, is out on GitHub. So if this isn't super clear, um, feel free to ask questions, um, even just on the on the repo directly as well. So one of the things that we kind of struggled with and had to kind of think through is even with the image capture quality, um, there are still going to be moments where the pints are further away, are closer, and so the image sizes could differ as well as just on different devices. So the first thing we kind of had to do is we had to normalize the coordinates based on the image size. So the coordinates of like the X, Y, the width and height of our detections, we first had to normalize those. Then once we had our normalized coordinates, we could do a little bit of math. So um, first thing we did is we, uh, as kind of Hunter explained in the scoring slides, we first find our beer level relative to the center of the G based on that normalized coordinate. And then we just have a very simple math equation here. It's our score. So this is the 3.75 is our minimum, minimum score. And we're adding the kind of variable score here. So everything in, in the equation there is the variable score on the left of the plus sign. This 1.25, that uh, plus 3.75 is a perfect five out of five score, but this normalized distance away, what we're doing here is we're just taking a one, a factor of one, subtracting the normalized distance, which can be anywhere from zero to one, 
and multiplying that by our 1.25 to get that linear score, depending on how far away it is from the center of the G. So if you're unclear on this, feel free to reach out on this math at all. But the other thing I'll just touch on is we went a little bit more, um, I think, complex when there isn't a split. So for example, if someone missed the split and the beer level is below the G or above the G, what we do is we actually do a decay factor. So it is essentially we're calculating the score um, the further away it is uh, from that center of the G, even more worse the score is. So you get penalized even uh, not linearly, but exponentially on that decay factor. So that's a little bit about kind of the math behind the scoring. Um, and then the last thing we'll just kind of talk about here is how we built the leaderboard and some of maybe the architecture behind it. So as mentioned, we built um, this app with React Router. There are two main routes that help with the leaderboard and scoring. The first of which is the score slash ID. After we get those results back from the workflow API, we create a record in a Supabase table. And so that Supabase table has things like the username, the score, the date and time, and then our image URLs. And so another cool thing about Supabase there is they have this cool feature called storage, which is essentially just S3. So it allows us to save those images that we get back from our workflow in that database to then be displayed at a later point, both enabling that sharing feature as well as the leaderboard feature. If you haven't used Supabase, um, I'd highly recommend it. You can run the whole thing locally. And one thing I'll just poke at right now is our, super, our live Supabase database. So you can see this, you, know, you can see requests over the past seven days to this, which is kind of cool. But um, as mentioned, we have, we're using their storage to store our split the G images. So you can see all of the split the G images in the past that folks have used us for, which is kind of cool. And then you can also see the original pint image that we get back from the workflow. So it's been really cool to see folks using this in the wild um, at their local pubs and getting kind of cool results here. Last thing I'll just really quickly touch on in here is I can go into this table editor and I can actually just see all of the results of scores as well um, directly in, uh, in the Supabase app. So pretty cool there.